Open innovation would be the idea that organizations should make much greater use of external ideas and technologies in their own innovation activities on the one hand. On the other hand, a lot of their own internal unused ideas and technologies should be allowed to go outside for others to use as well. So it's a question of both inside out and outside in. That's correct. Now, can you give us a few examples to illustrate it? Philips would be a classic example of a company that has really transformed itself. Uh, back uh, prior to 2003, they had this high-tech campus of about 1,500 engineers and scientists gathered together on a square kilometer of real estate behind barbed wire with one entrance uh, and very careful security. And the idea was to keep the ideas in and keep them from getting out. In 2003, they had their own Berlin Wall moment where they tore down all the fencing literally opened up the campus and today instead of 1500 people there are more than 7,000 people so this entire high-tech campus has been turned into an ecosystem of innovation uh, instead of a guarded uh, repository of Philips own ideas. Now you've probably seen open innovation being practiced implemented in a number of corporations so what kind of benefits do companies get from it? So I would say there are at least a couple of important benefits. On the outside-in half of the model, uh, you get the benefit of reducing the cost of your own activities because you are leveraging others as well, and you only pay for the part that you're using. Uh, and it, you can start in the middle with outside organizations or contributors. You don't have to start at the very beginning. So there's a cost uh, efficiency in that. So this kind of a relay race and the passing of the baton uh, is one example of uh, a much more open innovation process. What kind of cultural leadership challenges are faced in making the transition? Because transition is very nice to picture as a relay, but is a major change for these organizations. You're exactly right about the change in the mindset. Uh, I think the, the starting point has to be not all the smart people work for us. And as a culture, instead of being threatened by that, we have to embrace that and say, great, how can our smart people go out and find, collaborate with, and then leverage the other smart people that don't work with us? So I do believe that one of the fundamental philosophic underpinnings of open innovation is the idea of abundance. That we are not in a world of scarcity. We are in a world of abundance when it comes to knowledge and uh, useful stuff all around us. We need enough protection for people to be able to make those initial investments. We want to keep the protection low enough that these other business models have a chance to flourish and let consumers decide how best uh, to enjoy the fruits of uh, people's knowledge.